Hey everyone. Well, we're back again. How are you? Everybody's looking good. And uh, I wanted to mention here before I kind of get into the video here that I've uh, um, been off for three weeks now, and I've got another ten days left, and I'm I'm back on here with uh, the video. I hope you all liked my shirt. I thought it was applicable. Actually, Nicole got it for me. Thought it would be appropriate for me to do a video in so that I could get some some racy comments uh, in the comment section. Before I get into the video, I just wanted to mention here that uh, um, I haven't taken any time off in 11 years. Um, I've taken a few days off here and there and in between. And a week is the most I've ever taken during those 11 years. And to take a month off has been really refreshing because I learned one thing that doing the work that Nicole and I do, and she's on vacation too, by the way, and out of the country at the moment. And uh, one of the things that I've learned is when you're empathic uh, and you do this type of work, uh, we are vastly underpaid for what we have to put up with and tolerate. And uh, <laughs> I'm beginning to think that uh, in many cases here, uh, Mel's University of Giving Information on YouTube has a great deal of value. Uh, and I wanted to uh, ask people, uh, subscribers if you will, is I'm very much interested, because I have a certain, um, shall we call it, level of consciousness of people that come to our YouTube channel and listen to me uh, ramble on, uh, you're at a certain state of your consciousness. Um, and I'm going to ask you if you have interest or titles or themes or whatever, uh, put it in the form of a question or put it in the form of a topic that you'd like me to discuss. And, I, and I'd like to hear from my subscribers if that would be possible. Uh, you can put them in on the comment section and I will uh, hopefully be able to deliver them through because I want to hear what you have to say. The other thing that I wanted to say here before I do the video, and the video I'm going to do today, by the way, is someone asked me to do a continuation of the um, three videos that I've done in the past, allowing and the two videos about, um, you know, allowing your relationship to come into form. And I'm going to do that. However, I just want to say, um, as a general rule, I don't really listen to the videos that I do. I just kind of do them and uh, put them up. And during the time that I had off, I went back and I listened to the three videos, the one on allowing and the two on allowing it to come into form. And I have to say, um, I was really surprised because of all of the videos that I've done, and I've done a lot of videos, I think for me personally, that's just my personal thing, those are three of the best that I've ever done. I think it sums up the whole Twin Flame connection, the whole Twin Flame experience. It wraps it all up. It really does. So really at this particular point, to get into, you know, how to continue it on, is I can do that a little bit to a degree. But I think from this point on is what I'm going to be doing is popping in new information occasionally, but I'm going to be doing a lot of repeating of information, but elaborating more uh, with situations that have come up in the evolutionary process. And I think you'll find that as we go along kind of thing. The other thing that I am surprised at is considering how good those videos are. Okay, I'm not going to be humble here. They are good. They're really good. Um, and I know they reached a lot of people. What I find surprising is, is I didn't, I didn't see the volume of views that I thought that they would get. I thought that people would get excited about these videos and want to share them with other people. And I didn't really see that. Because one of the videos only has about 10,000 views and it's been up for a month. The other one was only about six or 7,000 people. That's about it. I, I actually thought that when I watched the videos, I was saying, this is going to go somewhere. So I thought this would pop up and show up in, in other people's groups and stuff like that, but it didn't. So what it tells me is, uh, in some cases, uh, when it comes to the information that I'm giving, I'm ahead of my time. And I'm ahead of a lot of people when it comes to it. And again, I'm not going to be humble. And I'm going to not apologize 
when I give information that upsets people, and I'm not going to apologize to people who make the comment, well, I don't think you're even a twin flame, and I'm not going to apologize anymore to anyone or any information that I put out that puts them in a situation as feeling as though they're being judged. I'm simply going to continue, and that's my motto, to be who I've been, how I've been presenting, and continue in that way. I also would like to ask some of you, uh, my subscribers on the channel, if you would feel inclined to any one of those three videos, which I like so much, to post them around, uh, if you will, and I'm asking your help. Because I think some of those videos, or those three videos at least, could help a lot of other people. And I can't do it all by myself. I cannot. And neither can Nicole and I together. And she's doing her part in the community also, but in a different way, in a different direction. So I'm going to ask you for help. If you thought that video was good, splash it around. Show it around. I really think a lot more people in the community should be, have an opportunity to watch it, even if they don't like it just so the seeds are planted kind of thing, and I think it would work. What do you think? I think it's a good idea. Okay. Now, to continue on with how to bring it into form, I'm going to propose it this way. I'm not going to make this video too, too long. I've given you classic examples of the situation in regards to bringing it into form and what to do and perhaps what not to do. If at this particular point you've, uh, you know, kind of digested some of what the video puts in into yourself, this is what I would like to propose to you at this particular point. If you can understand at this time that bringing things into form is really not that difficult. All you really need to do is to, one, completely, completely, when you start forming an agenda or you start creating things in your mind, especially if you have a connection with somebody going and you're going to allow it to come into form, what's going to happen? is your old belief systems about relationships, expectations, and agenda have not disappeared. They're still there. All right? And what I'm going to propose to you is they're going to come up again. And you're going to want to fall back into your old habit patterns emotionally, mentally, and probably even sexually. So what I'm going to propose to you is this. When you digested what I've said in the video, and you find yourself falling back into an old belief system or an expectation or agenda, this is what I'm going to propose to you. That when you realize you're doing it, you do this. Go into a light meditative state, if you can at the moment, or do it later when you have the time. Go into a light meditative state, just sitting there, just simply close your eyes, and then go back and repeat what you were thinking in your head, okay, what your thoughts were, and repeat it again. Let it come out, but do it here. Do it in the heart center chakra, and let it come out there. Now, this is what's going to happen. When you can stay out of here and stay in here, what you can do is you can take the thinking process, which is seeing, and you can come down here and call it reflection or reflecting or contemplating. Don't call it thinking. Say to yourself, I'm going to contemplate what I was thinking about previously. All right, I'm going to repeat that. I'm going to contemplate or reflect upon what I was thinking about previously, about what I'm expecting, or I have an agenda, or a what if. What if is a good one, okay? What if, and I'm going to reflect upon it, contemplate upon it, here in the heart center 
short room. And then do the same thing. Play it over, see it. What will happen at this point in your state of evolution of consciousness as you reflect upon it here in the heart center? You'll feel the heart center respond energetically. Now, every one of you will have to do this and everyone will experience it a little differently. It won't always be the same for everyone. It'll be a little different. The idea here is when I'm giving you a tool to work with is feel free to modify it or change it so it fits your frequency, all right? Don't, don't take it as if I'm writing it in stone. It has to be done exactly the way I'm saying. I'm doing this video and I'm speaking to the general population, all right? So therefore, I'm speaking in general terms. So, so you're contemplating or you're reflecting upon it here and you feel a correspondingly, I gotta close my eyes when I'm doing this because I'm, I'm getting a download. Correspondingly, when you, when you reflect upon it or you contemplate upon it here, you'll get a corresponding vibrational feeling in the heart center chakra. It will give you a, kind of like a, a yay or a nay. And if you get the nay, then what you need to do is you need to reflect upon the image, call it thinking up here, that the image that you were contemplating or thinking about, reflect upon it again until you get it into clarity. When you get it into clarity, you will get a vibration. The vibration at that particular point will tell you if it's something that can be let go of or simply dissolved. And what will happen is as you're reflecting upon it, you'll get a vibration like a pulse or a wave will kind of uh, it's kind of like if you throw a stone in the water and you see that ripple type thing that you see, you'll feel kind of a ripple or a wave-like sensation. And suddenly what you were contemplating or reflecting upon will do gone. It will dissolve right in front of you. What that means is this, is from an energetic perspective or point of view, you're dealing now with I'm going to put it this way. You've heard me mention this in other video. You're dealing now with your stream of consciousness. Everyone's stream of consciousness has a recognizable frequency or identity to it. Later, as we evolve and grow spiritually, we will be able to recognize a person by those things. There are many people who can do this already. In many cases, when I do counseling or advising people, I have them face to face, but in face to face, I can actually recognize their frequency or their energy in that way by connecting through the heart center shock, and I'm sharing it with you now. There are many people who can do this, they just don't know how to put it into word. I'm just putting it in a different way so that you can do that. So as this you hold you hold this reflection or contemplation in the heart center, the frequency will hit a match and it will hit that ripple or wave-like effect and suddenly the thought or the contemplation that you're imaging will simply disappear and dissolve. What that means is it has been erased as a, uh, what's the word I'm going to use here? It has been erased as a mental, I don't know what the word I'm, I'm looking for here. What's the damn word? Um, as a mental, uh, the best word I can come up with is a mental fabric or a mental thing or a mental, uh, I don't have, there's not a word for it. I think some of you will understand what I mean. Projection. It will come up as, it will re be released as a mental projection. That's the best word I can come up with. It'll be released as a mental projection. At the same time, what will take place as it's been released as a mental prediction, it cannot remain in the emotional body as an energetic template or a button or a pattern that stimulates the emotional part of you to bring it up and then make it a mental projection. You have to understand that emotion and mental are a combination of one and the same thing, two bodies with two different aspects of it. You need to learn how to use this. And it's tricky initially in the beginning. 
So if you continue to do this every time you find something come up that's a belief system or it comes up as uh, an agenda or an expectation, then deal with it in this way. Also, to elaborate even more on this, you can take this into other areas of your life. Uh, let's suppose I'm going to just use a hypothetical example here. Let's suppose you're having a problem with your boss. Okay, your boss is giving you a hard time. He's a real pain in the ass, and your job is in jeopardy. That's one example. So what you do is you take the example, because what you're going to be doing off the job or in the job is you're going to be constantly thinking about this guy who, or woman who's a real pain in the ass and really bothering you, and you're really having a conflict going with this person, and you're thinking about it all the time, and it's bothering you, getting stressed out, all right? What you're doing is, is you're creating that mental dynamic into and projecting it into the emotional body where it then begins to affect the physical body, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we want to change that. So again, you want to give it form, but you want to form it based on what is applicable to it. Now, you don't want to do anything that is negative to the person. And you don't want to do anything that's going to make you more stressed out. So you have to do something that is, for lack of a better expression, gender neutral. All right? Neither masculine nor feminine. Okay, and I'm going to be using that expression a lot in the future. So you go back and you close your eyes. You refocus your heart center to the center of the heart center. And again, you take the situation as an image or a visualization. And you contemplate. You're not thinking about it. You're contemplating or reflecting. Now, thinking is done up here. Reflecting and contemplating, I'm repeating this so most of you can get it. Reflecting or contemplating is done here. The heart center is for reflecting and contemplating. It is not for thinking. Please understand that point, okay? It is for contemplating, reflecting, or there are other words you can use. It is not for thinking. So you're contemplating or reflecting upon this, uh, reflecting. Okay, in this case, you're having a problem with your boss, so you're reflecting upon the situation that you're having with your boss. So you're revisiting it through a visual presentation, and you're looking at it from that perspective, but you're doing it by reflecting upon it in the heart center chakra. Now, the heart center chakra, as many of you know, is a creative source. Many people seem to think that the only thing that's possible with the heart center is you can emanate unconditional love. Let me tell you something. If any of you on this planet were truly emanating unconditional love, you wouldn't be having any problems in your life. Period. And I don't know anyone on this planet who's not having problems of some kind. I don't care how spiritual they are or how evolved they are. So unconditional love does not exist on this planet. It doesn't exist. But it will down the road. So anyways, you're reflecting on this situation. So you see the picture again. You go through <clears throat> the visual presentation of the situation between you and this other person being the boss in this situation. So you play it. And then suddenly somewhere along the line, when you get it to the right frequency through contemplation, now you're not thinking about it as for a solution. All right? You're contemplating the situation. What you're doing is you're allowing the creative source center, creative source center, with its point of origin is up here, but it's connected through this as a vehicle of expression in the physical. You've heard me say this before. Up here expresses through here. Okay? So what you're doing is you're reflecting this situation, contemplating it. You're not thinking. You're reflecting upon it. And as you reflect upon it, what happens is you're going to reach a certain frequency again that will cause a vibrational ripple or a wave-like motion in the heart center chakra, which will dissolve 
break up the mental projection that exists in the mental body, which in turn will cause a dissolution of the button or the reaction in the emotional body, voila. And guess what? Finally, finally, some of us and you, the person in the back chewing gum and picking your nose, all right, pay attention to my videos when you come here. I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here to give you goodies that you can use to change your sorry life. Pay attention when I'm talking. If you don't, you could miss something. Mine is a pay attention YouTube channel. Period. That's why there's no bears, no bells and whistles, no flashing music, no Getty cards in front with a thumbnail and all of that shit everybody else has got to use. When you come here, you're going to get stuff you can use. And I haven't tried to sell you anything. And you don't see below this video a whole line of products and t-shirts and guppy ponds and other bullshit people trying to sell you. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm trying to give. You see? There's a difference. I know how to give. Other people give on condition of what they're going to get. I give on condition knowing it's going to come back to me some way or another. In that way, there's a very big difference. Because I know how to contemplate and reflect here. I'm not the best at it, but I'm making great strides, especially so in the last three weeks. So you reflect upon that situation. What happens is if you do this two or three times, here's what's going to happen. You're going to acquire something that so many people tend to do, and that is acquire a belief system that comes from somebody else or something else. What you're going to do is you're going to acquire and you're going to say, as you see the results, you're going to say, holy shit, this works. Mel was right. Yes, he's right. See my shirt? It says right there. That's why I got the shirt. Mel was right. This works. And the moment you say that, guess what? You've created a new belief system for yourself. All I did was create the tool and give you a tool to be able to do that. Why am I giving you the tool? I'm giving you the tool to do that because it comes to me from up here, expresses through my in here, and I give it to you because my job as a messenger is to help you to go home and be your original self. Now, is that not taking form within a lot of you? You try this exercise, apply it to other areas in your life, experiment with it. Here's the thing. Next time you're up on Netflix and you're bored and you're overstimulated, say, piss on this, I'm gonna go and try that exercise that Mel gave, I'm gonna have some fun with me, and I'm gonna have fun with me and within me. I don't need this crap and entertainment from the outside. I don't give a shit what my twin flame is doing. I couldn't care less about a karmic soulmate. Karmic soulmate, my ass. I'm gonna have fun doing this. I'm gonna learn how to be a co-creator. I'm gonna learn how to have fun. I'm gonna have fun with me. I'm a fun person. And all of this stuff about me being sexually abused and physically abused and hanging around and I've got a narcissist tendency, I can fix all of that by going in here and contemplating and reflecting and using this wonderful tool that Mel just gave me. And for free! The guy's an idiot. He keeps giving this stuff away for free. I'm the most beautiful idiot you ever met. Have a great day, everyone. Love you all.